it kind of took us a, a second to like expand and like realize, oh no, we can ask for that and we should ask for that. And like, oh no, we deserve that. Yeah, no, that number sounds right. Like, let's go higher. Like, no, like this is what we deserve as players. And you kind of like got uh, our bearings within the CBA as negotiations were going. And then certain things started happening throughout the season last year that kind of made us solidify our stance even more on where we for sure. were. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> for sure. With <laughs> everything coming out about Paul Riley and then you see Richie Burke and then you see Louisville's coach is all of a sudden released. And then you're down to nine out of 10 coaches in the league have been replaced in one season. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, maybe as the league, we should give the girls what they deserve and what they want. But instead, we wait until the ninth hour on January so that we are in collective bargaining meetings, waiting for the league to respond to proposals they should have already responded to for hours. Like we will sit, we sat on these bargaining calls almost every single day in December and January waiting for the league to know that yeah like wait just waiting for the like we hop on the call in the morning and i'd be in i was in europe for the first few weeks of january and my boyfriend was like what are you doing on the phone like we are in we are outside like the sagrada familia like what are you doing on the phone and i'm like it's a collective bargaining call like i gotta like, i gotta hear this like what if, what if they come on and say something like we have to be on yeah. we have to be on call and i was just like this is like this is monumental this is so important like why don't they want to respond? Why don't they want to get this going as fast as we do? Why don't you want to start something new and fresh for this year of 2022 after what was 2021? And I think like that heart, like, like broke all of our hearts that the league was not trying to respond as quickly as we were. Like we wanted to start a foundation for what this league should be. And it didn't seem like they wanted to match us on that. So January, December and January were really, really stressful in terms of just like, come on guys, like we, we're so close, like let's just push it forward, like let's get this done. So like, yes, we have so many meetings throughout the year, but like you see like the end product and people are like, oh yeah, no, like a couple of days of bargaining, like, like it's good. Same with like the US Women's National Team, what that just yeah. came out with that settlement. <laughs> That Which settlement yeah. took them so much longer and so many hours than we could possibly ever imagine. So it's just like, oh, people are like, what a win. And it's like, they haven't even come up with the CBA yet. Like, that's just one step. That's just one victory in the grand bat, like one battle in the grand war. Like this is, it, it's like, we need to keep going. Like we need this momentum to keep going. V doesn't know this, but I don't even think I've told you this, Joanna. I actually got into, I had a conversation with V in December and because I was feeling, um, like I needed to make a greater impact in my life, especially in the sport. And at the time I was <laughs> still working in finance and I was like, you know, maybe I'll just like volunteer my time, like to the player associate, whoever, like I need to just give my time. And after talking to you and recognizing, like, I had no idea, but obviously, like, I, I wasn't asking people about the collective bargaining agreement. I knew of some other things that were going about. And she was kind of talking to me about, you know, like, I'm on calls for like three to four hours a day. Like, we're doing all these things. And you really motivated me to now take on the job that I have with Gotham because I wanted to be part of it. And I think, again, like, I'm by no means part of what the players are doing, but, you know, I feel a sense of like, uh, excitement around, like all these women are, be are creating history. And I'm like, if there's even one piece that I can say that I've helped in or helped facilitate, like what that value will be to my life in 10 years is greater than any other experience that I've had. And, um, I know we've said this, but I just think like, well, one, thank you because, um, the work that you've done and the collective group has done, um, will not only make it not only is history and will improve your current situation, but like, think about all of the young girls that now have also, opportunity. I also just think about like the, when we entered the league, like, can you imagine entering it now? Like no. just all the hard work that like you guys have put in, like 
Dude, I slept on an air mattress for four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. They, like, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like what do you five times? <laughs> Like none of there's like a lot of things looking back at the time where it's like okay like I got to do my do my time to reap the benefits of being a professional athlete and the benefits that you would reap really weren't even that great but it's like now people starting to come to the league it's becoming more professional it's becoming the standard is so much higher so even though I'm out of the league now it's like thank you for, you know, paving the way for these younger girls after each draft class, every time a kid's drafted each year, the league is going to get better and better and better. And that just is a, a testament to like the hard, the four hour calls while you're out in Europe with your boyfriend. Like it, it's a testament to that. Like that's hard work. And that's actually paving the way for the next generation of NWSL players. So I think that's absolutely incredible. Like, seriously, thank you so much. Thank you. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's no, I mean, V, I just know V, like, V is very, you can just tell in her conviction. Yeah. Like, and I, I think it's just one point to bring up is like, there's this mindset around, oh, I'm a professional athlete. Like, I shouldn't complain. Like, my life, I'm a professional athlete. And it's like, that's bullshit. Like, I'm sorry, but it, like, we're not going to All Star Weekend. Like, I listened to something the other day how all these NBA players have like jets lined up to like fly on their vacation to like right after the the NBA, like all-star game. And I'm like, yeah, brah, like we're just trying to make it by like the minimum is 35,000, 35,000. Like I'm very happy. I'm very proud. That's, a, that's actually a huge number for us to start. Like, and it'll grow, but like in perspective, you're like, no, you can bitch, you can complain because some of it is still bullshit and we need to time. will slowly bring it to where it needs to be in value. Um, but just to have gotten us here is like incredible. Um, so yeah, V knows how I feel about it, but she's, she's also like, I, I think about like whoever selected, you know, keep V in all these things. Cause this girl is yeah. going to be a lawyer one day. So yeah. 